Hey, everybody, it's here to you, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D. In the previous episode, um, we finished uh, storming uh, Ikana Castle and learned the Elegy of Emptiness. So, in today's episode, we've reset the time cycle, and now, without further ado, it's time to enter the last dungeon of the game. Kind of. Welcome to the Stone Tower. It's going to take some time to get up here, so before we do anything, I'm going to um, go over here and play our new song. The Elegy of Emptiness. Using the Elegy of Emptiness will create a statue of the current Link form that you are using when you play the song. So, this is a very interesting power-up item thing, but I have a couple problems with it, which we'll be going over a little bit later in the video. But as for right now, I'm actually going to be speeding up by climbing the rest of this tower because, to be honest, it gets a little bit repetitive from here on out, so I'm going to speed up the more repetitive parts of this video, so you better appreciate it. So let's activate the Owl Statue. And kill the game's frame rate while we're at it. <laughs> okay, so I gotta say, I know I've talked about this a few times already, but I need to say this again. How in the world is the frame rate in this game so terrible? <laughs> like, Okina okay, Time 3D did not have this problem with the frame rate. How does Majora's Mask have it? <laughs> and it gets particularly problematic in this area. This probably seems like uh, the area where the frame rate just gets completely destroyed the most and honestly i'm not that big of a fan of climbing this tower in the first place because you have to play the lj of emptiness so many times to get up here and watching these cutscenes of the statues activating over and over again it gets a little bit repetitive pretty quickly on top of having to play the lg of emptiness so many times so, that's a big reason why I sped up that area for you, because I don't particularly care about that area. But trust me, after we're done playing the LG of Emptiness one more time, the worst is going to be over. As soon as these cutscenes will stop interrupting me so I can get on top of the freaking switch. Well, let's have you face this way, because the statues are facing towards the temple. While we're at it, I might as well also demonstrate what the Deku form of the statue looks like because um, the thing about the LJ of Emptiness statues is that they have the same weight as the character you're playing as. So the Goron statue is going to be a bit heavier than the other ones. And you can imagine the Deku Link statue is also going to be as lightweight as um, the Deku form is. And considering the fact that Deku Link is uh, too light to press down any switches. 
unfortunately, Deku Link isn't going to be all that useful going forward. At least in terms of the LG Vemptiness. So let's get a good look at these statues right here. Uh, we can see everybody's favorite one, especially the creepypasta community. We can see the statues of Macau. Honestly, this one's probably the creepiest one in my personal opinion. We can also see the Deku one and uh, Darmani, Darunia, whatever your name is in this game. But I'm taking care of all that. It's time to go inside the temple. Welcome to the Stone Tower Temple. This is widely regarded by the Zelda fanbase as being the absolute best dungeon in the game. This is the fan favorite dungeon of Majora's Mask. I could certainly see why. It has a lot of very clever gameplay mechanics, which we'll be seeing a little bit later in the game. We're not going to be seeing a whole lot of it right now, though, but trust me. Stone Tower Temple, there's a reason why this one is a favorite. So let's go over here, destroy all these boxes, and you may notice there's a treasure chest on the ceiling. That's normally not supposed to be there. Hmm. That is an intriguing situation. <laughs> Alright, so we're removing this box way over here. Thank goodness this isn't the original Tomb Raider because otherwise the box pushing mechanics would be way more dreadful than they already are in this game. They're not that bad, I just like to complain. <laughs> so, let's head over here. And activate the switch! Watch out over here, because we're going to be seeing a couple more of these guys. The Real Bomb Chew. That's its name? Real Bomb Chew? So, the Bomb Chews we use, are they fake Bomb Chews? I never knew their official names until now. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, we're going to be using the LG Emptiness a couple more times throughout this dungeon, so this is basically the closest that we get to a fourth uh, transformation mask in this game, at least during the main story, because, uh, ow, <laughs> uh, where was I going with this? This is basically the closest we get to another mask uh, that can transform Link, because uh, while it doesn't exactly act as something like a Zora mask or a Deku mask, the LG of Emptiness, the way it's used, it really does feel like uh, the closest we get to a fourth transformation mask. Activating all those will keep the gate open, but the blue switches, uh, you need something to stay on them for them to stay activated. So just keep that in mind. We're, we've already seen uh, browns, golden switches uh, throughout the game. We haven't really seen a whole lot of blue ones though, so this is kind of a new gameplay mechanic for us to play around with. There's a locked door right there, so we're gonna need to look for a key. We got some more of these dragonflies over here. But luckily, we can shoot stuff! Yay! The magic of the bow and arrow! Ha 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 ha! Alright, so there's a bumble wall right here. That's not a wall, that's a floor. I apparently don't know my architecture terms. I'm not Ted Mosby. <laughs> Blow that up, and let's go down here. Going down here, we're taking you to the same place as that square that we just made. So, that's pretty fun. Alright, so we head over here, and we can use our mirror shield to activate this thing. Now, I know this isn't the case anymore for this version of the game, but there was actually a mistake in this room on the Nintendo 64 version of Majora's Mask, where if you went up towards these things, your button icon will suggest that you can move them around, but that wasn't actually the case. So, so I remember getting confused on that a lot when I was a kid and played this game the first time. Thankfully, as long as we're ducking like this, uh, their explosives won't hurt us. Yay! Isn't that exciting? Alright, let's destroy you. We got a couple more of these blocks that we can destroy. I don't actually know. I think they're Armos Knights? Yeah, they're Armos. Okay. Alright, let's take care of them. Are they not that intimidating to destroy? Trust, 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 trust! We were right there! We could have been on top of the treasure chest and now we're not. It's very depressing. Oh well. So let's head over here. 
And what could it be? 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 You have creepy glitchy eyes. We got the dungeon map. All right. So for those of you who haven't been keeping up with this let's play, something that is very well worth mentioning again, and this is the last time that I'll say this, I promise, that we are not going to be looking for stray fairies on our first run through a dungeon, because. We're only going to be focusing on how to actually beat it in this video. So the Stray Fairies will be saved for a montage a little bit later after we're done with the dungeon. So just keep that in mind in case you haven't been keeping up with the Let's Play. Alright, let's head on here. And I believe what we want to do next, there's a thing this way I want to go towards. It's going to be a little bit tricky if you don't know what you're doing, but if you have skills like me, then this might take a while. Oh man, I was kind of hoping we could get her on our first try because that would have been unnecessarily epic. Oh well, it's very unfortunate. There we go. We did it. We did it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright then. Let's get a concussion off the floor. Ow. That looks really painful. Alrighty then. We got some magic jars to make up for. The magic that we didn't need to use, the Zoros from controls, would have been the same as they were in the Zero 64 version, where they were perfect. I've already ranted about that enough, so I'm not going to rant about that here. Alright, let's head over here. And we've seen a switch on the ceiling now, so you may be wondering, what's up with that? Why is everything apparently on the ceiling? You're not going to get your answer for a little bit. We still need to make a little bit more progress before we get the answer to that. But right here we get introduced to a new gameplay mechanic. And one that does not make a whole lot of sense. So use your mirror shield to save and store the light into this one. And that will reflect the beam. It's an interesting idea. But I don't get it. <laughs> You'd think that it would reflect immediately and it wouldn't store into that. I don't know. Maybe it's like a magic mirror. Or well, actually, this is a Zelda series, so anything could be magic, so that actually kind of makes sense, but whatever. You got the compass! And the real bomb chew was kind of glitching through the top of the thing. Also, we have 32 rubies, so I can do 64 if you multiply 32 by 2. Alright, so one thing that is really cool about this dungeon in particular, the Deku Link had their time to shine during um, the Woodfall Temple. And this is the same case uh, with Goron Link in Snowhead or Zora Link in the Great Bay Temple. This dungeon, because there's no transformation mask within the Ikana region, this dungeon makes use of all four of your forms. So this is something that I find really, really cool because one thing that kind of bums me out about most Zelda games is that you get a really cool power-up, but then it's pretty much only really all that useful in the region you find it in. This one is testing your knowledge on how well you know how to use all of your forms, and it kind of interwines them into one big grand epic dungeon, and that's just all kinds of awesome. Going over here, there is a stray fairy that I didn't mean to collect. I thought there would be a key in there. All right. Yeah, this room right here is kind of notorious. So, actually, what's up here? What happens if we activate these things? Alright, th those can burn. This is probably a stray fairy, but I was very curious because I noticed those things up there. Yep, Stray Fairy. Okay, so, yeah, we'll be collecting that one again during the Stray Fairy montage. So, isn't that exciting? And one thing that's very worth mentioning is that the Black Bow enemies can be destroyed with your Mirror Shield. So, if they're kind of swarming around you, then you can also use that to protect you. So, that's pretty nice. So, so the longer you store the light beam into these mirrors, the further, uh, the longer these will stay here. Which is definitely going to be useful. So, what I recommend is storing the first one for a long period of time. Wait for this one to run out, and then head for the next one. I remember this room being a lot harder on the 264 version of this game. I don't remember too much about it though, other than not being a really big fan of it because it was difficult. But it's also been like five years or so since I played the Nintendo 64 version. Alright, we can destroy these guys. Uh, these are Nijiran. 
I couldn't remember the name for a moment, but they still sound like a Pokemon name. <laughs> Either that or a Yokai Watch character. One of those two. I did not have the camera facing that way. There we go. I didn't want to hit my head on a wall. I wanted to hit my head on a box. Alright, so this room. First things first, I want to go down into the lava over here. I need someone to lava. Alright, let's head this way. Be careful not to get caught up on the walls. I don't remember if there's a time limit on this or anything like that. I don't think there is because I didn't hear the time limit timer. But I just like going over there quickly just in case. Now we're taking care of all that, I gotta say, this lava just looks so incredible. I've praised the visuals of this game. This is easily one of the best looking remakes uh, that Tito's done for the 3DS. But oh my goodness, the lava there just looks so good. Alright, let's use the Deku Link. And we can fly around. Fly like a fly! <laughs> We go over here, and there are some rupees I want to go collect. Be careful with the Deku Link in this area, because if you fall in the lava, that's pretty much going to be it for you. Because Link is made out of wood, after all, and wood kind of has a tendency to burn when it's exposed to fire and lava and all that good stuff. Alright, this is based off distance, so let's go this way. I believe the distance uh, that Link can travel will reset when you're going through those uh, wind geysers. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're going through this area. Tidal, shut up! Destroy the jars because there are multiple nemesis. Go inside the door. Oh my god! Okay, Tidal, stop talking to me. Let me go into this area. Oh, right. That is not the form that I wanted to use. I wanted to go inside this one. So this is the Garo Master. You can't fight him like an ordinary Garo, just dodge those swords. So, so I was thinking more about that theory I was talking about the other day, when I was talking about what if these are like the terminating counterparts of the Sheikah clan. And I've been thinking about it a little bit more. This is probably even less likely because uh, this uh, clan wasn't invented when Majora's Mask came out. But... In The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, there's a group called the Yiga Clan. They kind of, uh, they were kind of Shika people who strayed away from that group and um, swore um, allegiance to Ganondorf. So I'm wondering if the Garo Masters are something similar to that, where they were loyal to the Kana people, but then they uh, betrayed them and were loyal to Majora or whatever the Ganondorf uh, counterpart in Termina is. Alright, so I haven't really talked about a whole lot of strategy with this guy. What I like doing is doing a backflip uh, when uh, he's going to do a charge attack like that. After you damage him, he'll immediately do a spin attack, so you definitely want to keep an eye out for that. To think I could be defeated. Although you are my rival, you were spectacular. I shall take my final bow by opening my heart and revealing my wisdom. If you shoot that which burns with a sacred golden light into the glowing red emblem outside the temple... The world shall be rearranged so that the earth is born in the heavens and the moon is born on the earth. Do not forget these words. Die I shall, leaving no corpse. That is the law of the Garo. We were right there for being on top of the treasure chest! It was literally on our nose! We could have been on top of the treasure chest! Oh well, we got the next best thing. We get the light arrows. The sacred light of justice resides in these arrows. Aim true to slay evil and light the way. This is the definition of awesomeness. So, in most Zelda games, if and when you get the light arrow, it is cool that you get them, but unfortunately, you don't really get to play around with them too much. Because you either get them super late into the game, or you get them pretty much the very last minute, and it's only ever used for the final boss. So the biggest, biggest examples I can think of this are like 
Ocarina of Time or Wind Waker. But the light arrows, we can use them for the rest of the game. And it is just awesome. So, if I remember correctly, light arrows deal four times the amount of damage as a light as a regular arrow, whereas the fire and the ice arrows only deal twice as much damage. Also, this right here, this is an Igor. You want to wait for their eyeball to change color, or just do that. That also works. And now we defeated them. <laughs> Link was turned around the cutscene. He's like, <laughs> he's like, cool guys, don't look at explosions. Uh. You probably shouldn't look at explosions anyway because, well, the amount of fire and energy may not be good for your eyesight. I'm just saying. You found a stray fury. This is the fifth one. Alright. Take care of you. So the first thing I want to use with the light arrows on, I want to activate this one. And another treasure chest has appeared on the ceiling. Seems to be a running trend that's going on with this game. Hmm. Owie! I'm sorry, Dragonfly. I know you don't like me being vague and cryptic. <laughs> Alright. So, now we're taking care of all that. Let's climb the ladder. And there's not really much else for us to do in this dungeon right now. We've gone as far as we could at this point in time. So... Let's go back outside and see if there's anything we can do out there. The Gear Master mentioned something about a red emblem outside the temple. Let's see what happens when we do this.